Praise Yah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Praise the Most High, Yah, for you all joining us. Um, live, hallelujah, Yah is good. Uh, the scripture says that his mercy endures forever. And we believe that, hallelujah. So praise Yah for his goodness. Praise Yah for his love and kindness. And praise Yah for his compassion. Hallelujah. 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 So let's pray again, and we're going to um, get into the word again. Hallelujah. So Almighty, again, as we, as we are uh, live before your people, I ask you, Almighty, for those who hear your word, bring deliverance, bring breakthrough, bring salvation for those who don't know who they are, for those who are not saved. Save them. Bring salvation. Wake them up to the truth, Almighty God. Your Israel begin to become Israel again. And Israel realized Israel is the seed of Abraham, Almighty God. And we walk by faith and not by sight. I ask you, Almighty God, in the name of Yahushua, that you would bring your people out of darkness into the marvelous light. Those of us who call upon your name in spirit and in truth, bring us out of darkness, bring us out of chaos, bring us into the light, the understanding, the awe of you, Almighty God. Help us to receive Yahushua as Messiah, who gave his life on our behalf for our sins and was raised back up three days later, Almighty Yah. So he died for Yahshua first and, and those who believe. So we thank you, Almighty Yah, for that. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, bring breakthrough. Give us wisdom. Help us to trust in you in the name of Yahushua. Let, 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 our, let what we do not be in vain, and we know that your word is not in vain. Let what the adversary does, let, let his word be in vain. But let us be truth. Let every man be a liar. But you be the truth, Almighty Yah, and set us free. We thank you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. We pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. So praise Yah, everyone. Uh, this, is, this is part three of the lesson, uh, Trusting in Yah's Provision. Trusting in Yah. This is part three of that. Um, I pray that everyone that has been hearing this lesson um, has taken heed to it, can take heed to it, and will take heed to it. Because, you know, that's the way you're going to make it. If you don't know how to trust in Yah's provision, you already lost. And that's true. Messiah, let me read something to you all before we even dive into the scripture. Because the Messiah says that was powerful. It's by faith. You know, uh, when you look at the scriptures, John, let's go to John 3. And let, 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 let's read this. this. We're going to start at verse 16. And so people can really hear what Messiah was saying. Uh, he says, for Elohim so loved the world that he gave his Yahid, his dearly beloved son, that whosoever believe in him or have faith in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That, that word believe in him uh, uh, it means to have faith. And it means that you won't perish. You won't die. You will not go into the lake of fire and you will not die. You, you, that, that, that you will live forever. For Elohim sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Hallelujah. But that the world through him might be saved or have salvation. He that has not faith or he that believes on him, is, excuse me, he that has faith or believe on him is not condemned. But he that don't have faith or believe not is condemned already. Because he have not believed in the authority or in the name. The word name is, 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 is a Greek word, but also it, it, it gives the, um, the understanding of the Hebrew word shim. And in Greek, it's, it's, it's onoma. It means the character or the authority. So if you don't believe in the authority that, 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 that the mighty one has, that the word has. If you don't believe in the character, then guess what? You already in trouble. He that believes not is condemned already. Why? Because he has not believed in the authority of the only begotten Son of Yah. So, so guess what? To trust in Yah's provision, you've got to believe in the Messiah. And believing in the Messiah takes more than you crying. Shouting with your big hat on. It's bigger than that. It, it, you got to live how he teaches us to live. I'm just being real. Because, see, many, many, many people want to say they believe in the provision of Yah. If you want to believe in the provision of Yah, you got to believe on who Yah sent. And the most high brings salvation, not your way. It ain't about what you think and how you think it should be done. It's about what he says, how he thinks it should be done. What he, just like Naaman, the 2 Kings 5. Naaman had Zerah 
what we know as leprosy. Leprosy is a is it, 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 a is a, a, a discipline given from Yah. It's an affliction that he that, that, that he exposes on the outside of your body based on the condition of your heart. So we got a man named Naaman who has Zerahat. He goes to the prophet El Elisha or Elisha. And, and, and El Elisha or Elisha tells Naaman, he says, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Naaman got offended. All these rivers we got over here in our place, and he want me to go dip in some dirty water like the Jordan. So guess what Naaman's issue was? Pride. It was pride. It was pride. Naaman's issue was pride. And so then, therefore, his, his servant said, Master, if he told you to go in and go in one of these other rivers, he said, you've done it with no problem at all. He gave you something simple. So the only way you can receive this thing is to humble yourself. Naaman had to humble himself in order to receive the salvation of Yah, in order to receive Yah's provision and be healed of a sin sickness. Is that right? So I, I, I'm here to tell you that trusting in Yah's provision don't come your way. It comes the way that the Most High desires for it to come. I'm telling you the truth. So the thing is, so you got to believe on Yahushua. He got to be more than your mother over there and you and putting on the ear. He got to be bigger than you talking about he came down to 40 and 2. It's bigger than that. You got to do what he say do. Yeah. He said in the scriptures, he says, if you want to follow me, you got to first say no to yourself. Pick up your execution stake and come follow me. You got you, you to gotta be willing to go through the crucifixion. That means you got to be able to deny your own self-interest. Now it's a faith walk. And a faith walk will cause you, as a child of y'all, to not lean to your own understanding. First thing you got to do is honor y'all's Torah. Whoever told you that the Torah is done away with, they lied to you. And I, I advise you today, to stop listening to that man or that woman. Because the Torah is not done away with. As a matter of fact, if anybody teaches you that, even their prayers are an abomination. They are visit to the Most High God. He don't even want to hear nothing they got to say. First thing you got to do. When the scripture says that the Messiah has come to redeem us from the curse of the law, it's not saying the law is cursed. His, the curse of the law is death. <laughs> so he has come to redeem you from death. Come and give you life. The law and the seven death being cursed. If that's the case, if, 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 do you understand what you're saying? Saying the law curse. You said a lot, a lot of stuff with that. You said the most high made a mistake. Right. His word was invalid from the get go. Most high's word has never been a mistake, and Yahushua, his son, never did replace him. So what you got to do is break down these traditions. See, the thing is, if you want to follow in God's provision, you got to get past this man-made tradition. One thing I want to talk about is the Trinity. That's not even scripture. That's something that you said. There ain't no such thing as a Trinity. It's, it's some boy. That's my son. He said, but look here. Yahushua is a mighty one. The word Elohim don't mean the word of God in Hebrew. It means mighty ones. The word Em is a plural. Means more than one. He's not God the Father. He is Yahushua the Son. Yeah. Yahuwah is God the Father. Yahuwah sent Yahushua his son to die for Israel first. And all those who believe. And once we receive Yahushua as our Passover lamb, then Yahushua, when he goes away, then the Father sends the comforter that we know as the rule of Hakodesh. That means the Ruach is the word spirit. Ha is the word uh, the. And Kodesh is the word what we call holy or set apart. So, the, so, so, so Yahushua, uh, the Father, sends back his set apart spirit. And that set apart spirit is to lead you and guide you into all truth. And Yah's word is truth. The Ruach HaKodesh is to convict the word of sin. Well, what is sin? According to 1 John 3, sin is indeed violation of the Torah. So there's no way in the world the Most High can do away with something he wants you to violate. <laughs> See, the thing is, if you want to trust in Yah's provision, you got to begin today to stop doing things your way. Today, I'm going to put it down. 
Mm. I know men, you know, who 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 came off crack cocaine without going to rehab. Cold turkey. Yeah, it's called cold turkey. <laughs> I mean, at that moment, they decide to be delivered, they stopped. Mm. You know, I smoked cigarettes back in 19, 1900, yeah, in 98. <laughs> yeah, my last time smoking any kind of form of tobacco was in 1900 mm. and 98. I ain't had to go to those steps, the, the 12 step program. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to smoke three, then go to two the next day, and then one and hit my last one. Like, nothing. <laughs> I stopped then. Right. And so, what I'm telling you is if you want to come out of your sin, if you want to come out of that muck and that miry clay, mm -hmm. if you want to come from being defeated in your life, you can start today. Get the right from the most high, y'all. Yeah, all you got to do is rid yourself of the spirit of fear. Some of y'all told me was this. Uh, he told me, he said, uh, in Genesis 3, when, when Adam hid himself because he was naked. He didn't hide himself because he was naked. He hid himself because he was afraid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to Genesis 2, the scripture said the man and the woman was naked and they were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. So Adam, Adam didn't come to the understanding that he didn't have no clothes on. His pride had the best of him. He didn't want the most high to see him being vulnerable. <laughs> And so then, therefore, he hid himself. And if you want the most high to see you, all of you, stop hiding yourself. He needs to see every vulnerability that you have. And when you want to hide your vulnerable parts, that's an issue of pride. And how can you try to hide yourself from your own creator who made you into who you are? See, trusting in the provisions of Yah requires for you to take on yourself Another mindset. And one thing you can't do is continue to lean to your own understanding. Our foundational scripture that we had was Genesis 22. And, 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 and the first two lessons, it showed that Abraham tested, the Most High tested Abraham. Let's just go to that because someone's got the wrong understanding of test and temptation. And they are not the same thing. Most high, the scripture says in James that Yah cannot tempt man with evil. He can't be tempted with evil, and neither does he tempt him with man. The Most High will not give you a commandment and cause you to fall. Right. That's not how he carry himself. Right. That's some of the religious told, religion told you. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, even in, in this thing, from now on, when a man or a woman, so called of Yah, tell you, you know, um, uh, something does the Bible say? Make them show you in the Bible. Myself included. And look here. Not no one chapter. Mm -hmm. Not just one verse. Read everything in its entirety. So we both can have a full understanding. Because you're not going to find nowhere in the scripture that Yah tips any man with evil. Right. So anyway, it says that the king of the these things, that uh, the, the King James got, 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 got a, a, a mistranslation. That's a wrong translation. The, the Hebrew word is nasa, and it means to try or to test. He, he, he tried Abraham's faith to prove Abraham's faith, to see what Abraham believed the word that had been told. Right. And how do I know this is true? By reading Hebrews 11 <laughs> and by reading Romans 4. It's clearly in the scriptures. So the Most High, he, he Nassau Abraham. Put the right word in context. It says now, and it came to pass under these things that Elohim did Nassau. The Sefer, let's go to the Sefer, was a better translation in the King James when it comes to certain words. The Sefer 22, Genesis 22. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did try Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take your son, your Yahid Yishak, your dearly beloved son, Yishak, whom you love, and get you to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as an ascendant smoke offered upon one of the mountains that I will show you. Now look here. And the thing was this right here. That when the Most High told Abraham, Take Isaac, I don't think he wanted to know if Abraham was going to keep his word. Was going to, was Abraham willing to do whatever it took to please Yah? And one thing that showed that Abraham was willing to do 
to where it took to please Yah, he didn't, he didn't hold back. When Abraham got ready to, sack, to, 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 to slay his son, he was not at all reluctant. He was getting ready to do it. Why? Because he already knew that the Most High would have to raise his son back up. Because a word that was given to him was that the son was going to come through Sarah. And the name of that son was called Yishak, Yishak, which means laughter. The Hebrew word, uh, I, I mean, the English word, Isaac. And the only way he, he named him laughter because Abraham laughed out loud to Yah. <laughs> what? But Abraham trusted in Yah's provision. And so then therefore Yah provided. As a matter of fact, the most Abraham would not have been able to call Yah, Yahuwah, Yerah. Because Yah wouldn't have been able to honor, honor Abraham's faith and provide for Abraham if he didn't have no faith. You know what the thing is? Most folks sing that song, what do you want to say in English, Jehovah Jireh or Yahuwah, Yerah? Because he, he didn't see he, he, he said neither. He said, El Shaddai provides, is what he says. El Shaddai sees. But he wouldn't have never been able to say that if he would not have had faith. And many people say that song without faith. And they'll never ever be able to see Yah's provision because they don't, they don't believe Yah. Because everybody's mind is geared toward Yah's provision based on Yah giving them something. Materialistic. He gonna give you a car. He gonna give you a house. He gonna give you a spouse. Everybody wanna shout through a hokey pokey and turn themselves around based on something like that. It also takes faith to stop fornicating. It takes faith to not commit adultery. It takes faith to not watch pornography. It takes faith. To not steal. It takes faith to honor the Shabbat. Because your faith is an active, obedient response to the word of Yah. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. What kind of substance that I, am I hoping for? The word that was given to me. That's my substance. Because that's what I live on. So when the most I tell you to be obedient and you be disobedient, that means you don't have faith in Yah. You trust in your own abilities. They, they, everybody quiet all of a sudden now, I reckon. Everybody wants something, but nobody wants to be obedient to the word of Yah because we're afraid of how somebody's going to think about us or what somebody's going to say about us. And we are compromising, give in, give up and walk away because of man. You know what's, I, 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 ooh, I'm going to say the name. You know what I see with some of these pastors? <laughs> it's, that, it's that we want to be, we want to compromise with the world. I see the pastor, you know who you are, call me, inbox me. <laughs> on shirt, on Facebook with a shirt off, get in the bag. You hypocrite and you're in your flesh. Because the most high don't call the world out based on fleshy things. Right. He didn't call you out based on your flesh. It's about a ruach. You cannot att attract a lost sheep with the word of Yah by showing flesh. Hallelujah. By what they're doing. Tell the truth. What makes you different and set apart? You got to walk in a, a set apart lifestyle. And you got to not compromise. And guess what, brother? You have to be willing to lose all things in order to gain Yah. For the word says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So how can you show somebody the world to attract them to Yah when Yah only shows them his word to call them to him? You want to get somebody to come to the most high Yah, you give them the word of Yah. You don't make no false promises about no riches. The most high did not tell Abraham I'm going to give you riches. He didn't tell Abraham I'm going to make you rich and give you a big old house. We're to see the Abraham. If we're to see the Abraham, then it's a must that we understand Abraham's story. 
Why do you think that some of these people, some of these so-called Christian church fathers, pulled out some of these 15 books out of the scripture? And now when it comes to you having to learn these books, you become reluctant because you ain't never seen them before. You got to start with lean to your own understanding. You're only a Christian uh, Hebrew because your slave master told you to be a Christian. And I'm not racist. I love all nations. But they put a picture of a white man in your face. It made you call him Jesus. And, and, and at the same time, a white man was beating you across your back, raping you and your wife. And selling you as livestock. And making himself seem to be more superior than you. And yet and still you want to say, yo, King Jesus. And you want to honor Thanksgiving. You want to honor Easter. You want to honor Christmas. And you want to call someone like me crazy or a fool or say I'm radical. But you don't even have the fortitude to stand and show me in the scripture what I'm, what I'm wrong yet. And ain't nobody called my number yet. And ain't nobody inbox me about the situation. No, if we want to trust in Yah's provision, then guess what, people? We have to do it Yah's way. Abraham prayed a prayer in Jubilees 12. He asked Yah, what should he do? Where should he go? Because he no longer want to be deceived by his own heart. He no longer wanted demons or evil spirits to have control over him. He wanted his allegiance to be to Yah and Yah alone. So he prayed to the Most High Yah. And the Most High gave him a promise. And see, that's how, that's how it happens, you all. We humble ourselves before Yahuwah. We resist the adversary. And he said he can flee from us. But we humble ourselves before Yah and we ask Yah for his guidance, his direction, his insight. Help us, Almighty Yah. What should I do? Where should I go? And we learn how to be still until it's a word given to us from Yah. Abraham prayed that prayer. Genesis 12 and 1 and Jubilee. We're going to read Jubilees as well. This is 21 says this. Now Yahuwah has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make you of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy character, thy authority, thy name great. Not just the name of Abraham. It's who Abraham was on the inside. Abraham is not known by his name. He's known by his faith. He's known by what he did. He's known by how he carried himself. Genesis 26 says the only reason Yah blessed Isaac was because of Abraham right. obeying Yah's commandments, his misvotes, and his statutes. How do you think? How do you? How can we continue to remain deceived? Right. To think that we know how to obey Yah's Torah, his Torah, when Abraham's faith was obeying Yah's Torah. Right. How can we have the same faith as Abraham and not do what he did? Exactly. It makes no sense. It was his faith that made Yah move. It was his faith that was accredited to him as righteousness. It was his faith that caused Yah to provide for him. He spoke to Yah out of a broken heart, out of a contrite spirit, because Yah wouldn't despise. Let me show you something. Yah never moves outside of his pattern. David understood that when he says in Psalms 51, a contrite heart, a broken spirit, a contrite heart, you won't despise. How do you figure David understood that? He, he heard Yah's Torah. Every king that became a king of Yah's Torah had to write down the Torah word for word themselves. 
They had to place upon them heart, their heart. And they did it by writing. And David understood Abraham's dilemma. He understood that Abraham had a broken heart. Abraham's heart was broken. His spirit was contract when he prayed to the Most High Yah. Remember, he had just came out of a fire. His daddy crossed him out. His brother just died. He, his brother was killed in the same fire. He had to leave. And he was in despair. What should I do? And some of the same, and even the same one who had heard him had to go with him, his own father. He had to have stuff on the inside of him. Delivered from. So when he prayed to the Most High Yah, he was in a vulnerable position. And he needed help. So Yah says, you know what? Come from your father's house. Leave that country. And go to a place. I'm going to show you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to bless you and make your name great. And you're going to be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. And in you, all the families. And who? And Abraham. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as Yahuwah has spoken. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Let's read something to you. Hebrews 11 and 8. Read from me. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. So wait a minute now. It says, by faith, when Abraham was called to go to a place to receive an inheritance, he went out, not knowing, he asked, where am I going? Right. He didn't say, well, if this is you, then show me this. <laughs> he didn't say, well, they leave from me, where would I go? He stepped out and started going. Based on a word that he was given. And if we're going to be the seed of Abraham, we have to have that same mindset. You know, I'm not speaking to you just to be talking to you, trying to be deep. We all got to live this. And you got to understand, the same words you preach, you got to practice. Whether you call yourself a minister or not. Yeah. How can you testify of a truth about a yah you don't know? Mm. How can you be a witness without having an experience? You're going to call to. you 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 going to have to. To be called a minister, the most high, you got to experience it. Yeah. And when he delivers you from something, it don't mean that's the last thing you're going to go through. Mm -hmm. The most high gave the every man a measure of faith. And out of that measure, the scripture says we go from faith to faith. And from esteem to esteem. So guess what? We all we all have to have to be able to go, you know, uh, by faith. Read, read, read verse 9. By faith. By what? By faith. By what? By faith. He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So wasn't that by faith? By his trust in Yah. I don't even by faith right now. We all need to be doing that. Mm -hmm. By his trust in Yah, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. And he dwelt in tabernacles with his son and his grandson. The heirs with him of the same promise. By faith. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is Yah. He looked for a city whose foundations and, and builders and makers uh, the builder and maker uh, was Yah. He stepped out on faith, believing in what Yah had told him to do based on the prayer that he had prayed to Yah. 
You know, I was thinking about something and we was praying and, and, and meditating that if you if you if you're gonna be really praying, then you gotta believe what you're praying. Right. Mm -hmm. And you gotta leave it there. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for you to be praying, getting back up worrying. Right. You should not have more trust in your natural mother and natural father than you do in Yah. Yeah. If you believe if mama says it's gonna be okay, if daddy says it's gonna be alright. And you're going to get over some company. I believe that. Then you better believe. If y'all say it's going to be okay. If y'all say it's going to be all right. Because when mom and dad tell you it's going to be okay. You don't care how it look. You stop leaning to your own understanding. Why? Because you believe that they're not going to leave you out there to hang the dry. They're going to come to the rescue quicker than Jim Dandy. Because he always comes to the rescue. They're going to come quicker than, than Jim Dandy to the rescue. Daddy's going to be there. Daddy said he's going to come. My, my daddy on the way. He'll drive two hours to come help me. I ain't worried about nothing. Well, then guess what? If you can believe in that, you better believe that when you pray to the Most High Yah, he's going to be there. And you got to trust in that provision. You can't be getting up, knees still shaking. Stomach hurt. You got butterflies and gas at the same time. Why? Because you don't trust in Yah. And we all have to grow from that. Because many of us, myself included, have gotten down and prayed earnestly with tears in my eyes and got up and didn't believe a thing. In mm -hmm. to see what the scripture say, the scripture called it a, a double-minded man. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man means you are in insincere. You don't mean what you say. Your heart best lets you go back and forth. And the word says you are unstable in all your ways. It also says, don't you think that you shall receive anything mm. from Yahuwah? Because you don't believe you're going to get it. And without faith, according to Hebrews 11 and 6, it's impossible to please Yah. You got to have faith. And I'm going to tell you something. It's people on this planet whose faith way beyond yours. In the head of testimony, he pleased Yah. Say, so without faith, you can't even please him. And get what he was told. He wasn't going to see death. Ain't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Anybody here knew him died? <laughs> probably. He didn't see the death of dogs and cows. He probably seen the death of animals and people in the family that died. Great grandfather and people in all kinds of folks that died. He probably was dead for Adam. Got, for, for, he, he probably was dead. Adam was probably dead before he was born. He probably heard of Adam. Where he at, daddy? Oh, he dead. We buried him over there. Under them rocks. And probably in his mind, he's never seen a man get back up from that dead. Right. But he still had to have a testimony. He still had to believe Yah. Do you think that if Enoch was told that uh that uh that um he wasn't gonna see death and the adversary wasn't gonna try to try him to get him sick? No, the adversary would always try the word of Yah. What you mean he's going to try to... Well, let's give you a good example. Matthew 3rd chapter says that Yahushua, when he was immersed by Yahukanon John, that the Ruach HaKodesh spoke. After the Ruach descended on him in the form of dove, Yah spoke from the heavens and said, it's my beloved son, it's my Yahid, and who are well pleased. The first thing the adversary said to the Messiah, after he was hungry and vulnerable, see, he was hungry. He had been fed for 40 days. He was hungry. He was vulnerable. He was weak. As I said, well, if you are a son of Yah, <laughs> turn these stones. He tried that word. You should, Yahushua should take, take heed to the word that was given to him from the Torah. Yahushua, if Yahushua defeated the adversary by the Torah and the word of Yah, what makes you think you don't have to? He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yah. So guess what? That word is going to be tried, but your faith is what allows you to stand. And your trust in Yah causes Yah to see you and to provide for you. Many of us don't trust in Yah. We trust in our own abilities. Uh, uh, Jubilees 12, 19 to 24 says this, and this is Abraham. And he prayed that night and said, read loud. My Elohim, El Elyon, you alone are my Elohim, and you and your dominion have I chosen. He said, my Elohim, mighty one most high, you 
alone are my mighty ones. And you and your dominion have I chosen. Go ahead. And you have all created all things. And all things that are the work of your hands. And all things that are the work of your hands. Deliver me from the hands of evil Ruachath. Who you, who you, my Elohim, oh, excuse me, who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from you, my Elohim. He said, he said, he said, yeah, you, I've chosen you. Then he says, uh, deliver me from the hands of evil spirits. The word rule of is, is the plural word, means spirits. Who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts. And let them not lead me astray from you, my mighty ones. He, 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 he's telling y'all, I know who you are. Help me. I don't want to be deceived by no demons, mm. by no bad spirits. I need you to help me. Please don't let them lead me astray. Then when he prayed to the Most High Yah, go, go, go here. And establish me and my seed forever, that we go not astray from, from henceforth and forevermore. And he didn't even have a son. His wife was barren. And he understood that while praying the prayer. Because Genesis 11 says she was barren before Yah called him. He says, establish me and my seed forever that we may go now astray from henceforth and forever. From this point on, we, and I want to be in that will. What is it, that number? I want to be in that one. Go ahead. And he said, shall I return unto Ur of the Chaldeans who seek my face that I may return to them? Am I to remain here in this place? So then he stopped leaning to his own understanding. He stopped trying to make his own decision. He asked Yah for guidance. And the one way is for you to seek Yah's provision, you got to stop trying to provide for yourself. You got to realize you are not the provider. He is. And it's him that guides you in your decision making. And you got to trust that Abraham was 75 years old. He had to humble himself, so I don't want to keep him as being 50 and 60. Mm. I've been doing this all my life. Well, get, in, get out your stubborn ways then. Mm. Okay, how old you are? Get out, get past you. Get past your stubborn ways. He was 75 years old. I done heard folks say, you know, they old now, they set in their ways. Mm. I beg to differ. Right. <laughs> There's no way in the world you can be in Yah like you say you are and you said in your ways. Then you're not in Yah. Right. Because a, 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 a proud man, the most high resist the proud. So you said in your ways, because they, they said it from a, a standpoint of you being stubborn. Right. So anybody that they're setting their ways or prideful, they don't know Yah. I don't care how good. See, see, you know when we caught up on how good somebody can speak. Sound, sounding eloquent in their speech, saying big words, breaking it down in the Hebrew, in the Greek, putting on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram your promotion. You being ordained, now you're the big leads now. So foolish of you. I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet. An apostle ain't no bigger than nothing. If an apostle is a greater officer than a prophet, then the most high is a liar. Show me in the scripture what you're talking about. Because what I heard in the scriptures, what I read, he is no respecter of persons. <laughs> and everybody got the same in the same category. They just got different functions. A different purpose. It's the same body, we got different members. You got a hand and you got a wrist with a forearm and a, and, a, and, a, and a arm with a, the bicep and the tricep on that thing and a shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a shoulder blade and all kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And all of them is equally important. Bible. 
Let your pinky finger get cut, cut off. You ain't gonna have no good grip. Oh my God. Sure. When you lose your big toe, the middle toe, the pinky toe, you're gonna still walk with a limp. Because you need all your toes. Right. So every toe is important. Your bottom lip just as important as your top lip, the thresh lip. You need all your teeth. Yes. Everything's important. Most high ain't no respect to persons. We can't trust in y'all's provision, so we try to make ourselves look big. I'm bigger than you because I'm this. You ain't bigger than me because you nothing. The commandment is to love me. And guess what? Like those men, Elder Robinson said it so eloquent the other day. When the Hoosier disciples came to him, who's the greatest? He brought a child because those men was beside themselves. As he's taught was humble yourself like a child, be teachable. Quit trying to get position. Quit trying to be big. Humble yourself and learn how to be taught something. So you know why many of us can't trust y'all's provision? Because we can't humble ourselves. Because we can't humble ourselves. It's all about us. Right. We want to be seen. Because it matters to us what people think and how they feel. It should matter how Yah feels and what he thinks. I guess it's tight, but it's right, huh? Yeah. It's hot, ain't it? But then take deal with it. You don't need no fan. Even Endure the heat. <laughs> Weak. <laughs> because the thing is, everybody want to be in the will of Yah. And we think we're blessed because we got money. We think we're blessed because somebody give us something. Show me the scripture where, where that shows you're blessed. You know, you, you, you know what's better than money? Wisdom. Wisdom. It's better than choice silver and all gold. Wisdom. We'll show you how to accumulate wealth to be a blessing for others. How you blessed? And you know somebody who in need, but you won't give. Or if you give, you got to post a picture of it and be big about it because I gave. No, do it in secret. It ain't about nobody knowing what you've done for other people. It's about you doing what's right from y'all's perspective. Because you can give with a bad heart and the most high still won't be pleased. Mm. Oh, okay. Then go give all you can have up then mm. and follow him. Let's see who's big, big, big enough to do that. I heard a man brag how he gave a car away mm. in a house that was due eight million. Mm. But you brag on what you're giving away. She just shut your mouth and let nobody see what you've done. And let y'all reward you. True. You want to proclaim on the rooftop what you've done. Who cares? Look at the harm you've called as well. Both of them are equal in the eyes of y'all. You gave a lot. And you also broken a lot of hearts. So which one is greater? Where's your humility in what you've done? Because the most high ain't going to cut his ear off to the one who's been hurt by you. Sure. He's going to hear that as well as he saw you doing good. See, everybody want to be big and, and famous, and but, but, but nobody really wants to walk by faith. Have you really seen the story of the prophets, how Ezekiel laid on one side for a long period of time and the other one laid on the other side? And we crying, but Jeremiah was thrown into a cistern. We crying, but Isaiah was killed. See, it's amazing how the prophet now got all these lines and everybody want to give $100 to him. And then the prophet is famous. That ain't even the pen of the scripture. Because they want to ask, you come in peace or what? Because when the real prophet show up, you want to examine yourself. Nobody want to examine themselves no more. And I'm going to tell you something of a, of a truth. And it might hurt. If you are a prophet, you better check your salvation. If you're under the Sunday and not the Shabbat, you better, re, you better want to recheck your calling. But how can you hear y'all tell you about someone else's life but you can't hear Yah when it comes to obeying the commandments when the sign of the Shabbat is to obey the covenant of, the, of Yah, the Torah. Oh, it's amazing. Yah told me to tell you in the next five years, 15 months, 45 days, and 42 minutes, he's going to bless your life abundantly. But I tell you, Yah told me to tell you on the Shabbat, and you tell me I'm in the flesh. Which one is the truth? <laughs> the Shabbat. <laughs> Go ahead. Want to read? Want to read? Okay. 
refer to this, but the right path before you. Well, let me read. And he said, Shall I return unto Or of the Kasdim, who seek my face that I may return to them? Am I to remain here in this place? The right path before you prosper it in the hands of your servant that he may fulfill it, and I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart, O Eloha. He said, The right path before you prosper it in the hand of. Not the right path before the servant. Right. Yeah, the right path before you. Hallelujah. He says to prosper it. That's my prayer. Oh, my y'all, the right path before you. Prosper it. Oh. In the hand of your servant. That, that I may fulfill it. He may fulfill it. And that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart. Because the way there is a way that seems right to a man. So they end their own. So don't go your way that seems right. Go the right path that Yah has for you. Right. There's a lot of things that would change in your life when you follow Yah's word. Mm -hmm. When you walk in faith. Things you never could imagine. Because what you're doing and the way you're going may not be his way. Mm -hmm. So before you try to continue to seek your goals and your dreams, how about seeking his will for your life? And find out what his purpose is for you. Some folks work hard for nothing. Because it's their will and not yours. All progress ain't good progress. Go ahead. And he made an end of speaking and praying. And behold, the word of Yahuwah was sent to him through me, saying, Get you up from your country and your kindred, and from your kindred, and from the house of your father unto a land which I will show you. And I shall make you a great and numerous nation. And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be blessed in the earth. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And I will be an Elohim to you and your son. I'll be a mighty one. We'll be mighty ones. The Father and the Son. And whoever he sends to protect you and defend you, whether it's one of his uh, 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 malachs or his angels or his messengers, he'll be a mighty one for you if you follow him. Go ahead. And to your son, son, and to all your seed, fear not. From henceforth and into all generations of the earth, I am your Elohim. He said, fear not. From this point on and from henceforth unto all the generations, us as well. His true Abraham's seed. I am your Elohim. He said, I am. And so guess what? To trust in the provision of Yah. We have to see this. We have to know this. See, the words got to be more than just words to you now. They have to be something that you're going to eat. They have to be your life. You got to trust. You know, the adversary tries to trick you because we've been lied to for so long that we don't know who to believe. So when it comes now to want to follow Yah, we struggle and vacillate because we don't really want to believe him. But let me tell you this. Believe y'all. Don't take my words for it. Take what the scriptures say. Mm -hmm. You know you know why some of y'all don't have living waters flowing out of your belly? Because you don't believe on your husha as the scripture have said. That believe on me as the scripture have said. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The scripture don't tell you to, 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 to honor pagan holidays. Ever. But it does tell you to believe on him who he has sent. If Yahushua did it, why, why would you stop? Everybody want to. I mean, that, 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 that bracelet that came out a few years ago, that slogan. WWJD. WWYD. What will Yahusha do? If Yahusha were under the Shabbat, why not you? Right. He, what, what would he do? After all, he is a master of the Sabbath. Mm. You know, it's amazing how folks try to tell you that, um, to tell Paul. The Paul did, did away with the Torah, but Paul went to the synagogue on Shabbat to teach. You can't find nowhere in Paul's letters 
<laughs> of him ever doing anything against the Torah. Right. You know how most of y'all can't understand Paul's letters? Because you fit for the lie of the Torah being done away with. And so you start reading the Torah. Oh, my bad, my bad. You start reading everything except do the Roman and Malachi. Because you want the money. <laughs> That's true. But everything else you didn't want to read. WWOID. What were you who should do? He'll obey his father. Right. He'll stand and walk in righteousness. He'll deny his own self interest. Right. If you're going to do what he did, then why won't you do the same thing he did? Tomorrow, everybody's going to be in, in, in church sin and doing the splits. Mm -hmm. Preaching about Thanksgiving. They're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. They're going to be getting up early. Oh, yeah. Today, they're all these catching ham. <laughs> And chicken and dressing. Because they want because they want they rather satisfy family more than they would y'all. Right. And they get mad at me and stop listening as if it affects me. Let me tell you something. You stop listening to the truth, don't affect nobody but yourself. Because it's you who's gonna have to suffer the consequences for your own disobedience. I ain't gotta stand before you. Don't stand beside you when you stand before y'all. I, I can't be your lawyer. Mm -hmm. Matthew 7, chapter verse 21. Let's read that. Because if we want, if, if we want to trust in Yah's provision, then we have to, you all, do what Yah wants us to do. Right. And that's the thing. Nobody wants to uh, obey Yah. You know, I, I was reluctant to do this, but I'm going to give my testimony, a small testimony of myself, and not for boasting, but to show you that we all got to walk in the ways of Yah. So I had a great job that I thought was a great job. And I wanted, and I made good money at this job. So in this summertime, I was attacked on my job. I had, well, when I first got to the job, they feed everybody once a month at the end of the month always. They would have pizza and good food. They would have pork and all that stuff. So they noticed I wasn't eating. So they would ask me, why, why, why don't you eat? Because I, I don't eat pork. That's a new white meat, what they would tell me. Well, I don't eat that white meat. Mm -hmm. I ain't no long way as long as you pray over it. They would I would be quiet by myself. They would come challenge me. So we go through the scripture. Hmm. I had him tell me, well, you know what? What you said, that's right. I see in the scripture, you're right about that. But I'm going to still eat pork meat all my life. I said, well, enjoy. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to eat it. I had folks tell me in that job that our relationship is unreconcilable. Because I'm under the Sabbath, and they didn't. They stopped talking to me. You know, I, but I would do my good job. Because I wasn't for them anyway. They would QA me. I never got a bad QA. I always had good ones. Never got into trouble on that job. But when I started, when they tried to make me under the Sabbath, they had a problem with me because they thought I was going to compromise. The first time my job was threatened, I said, well, I need to turn my keys in now. I, well, I need to turn my in now, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm under the Shabbat. And I told my managers, it would come to me being fired for obeying the Most High. So be it. The last straw was the feast. I told them I got to keep this feast. They fired me for keeping the feast. Said I was gone too long. I didn't feel bad about it. So you got to trust in y'all, period. Because if he's the provider, he's the provider. Right. You can't be talking about you trusting y'all, but you won't compromise mm -mm. and say, y'all know my heart. Uh. They don't cut it here. Mm -mm. You got to be willing to stand and trust him. Come what may, I lost my job for obeying y'all. You know what I did? Keep on I kept on pushing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I started smiling and shouting. Because you know why? Because I can't have a job working for men anyway. Mm. I, don't think it, I don't think it's right. I got to ask you permission to serve my y'all. 
So I'll start my own business then. Well, I do my own, do the, all the feast days in Shabbat. And I believe y'all provide for me to do everything I need to be done. Mm -hmm. And I know eyes are looking at me. Am I going to fall? Am I going to fold? You know what this, this has taught me? To pray more. Mm -hmm. To seek his face and, and be patient. Yeah, and not lean to my own understanding. But to know that y'all will provide for me, period. And I believe that. So I'm telling you something that I got to live myself. That we got to trust y'all. And we cannot walk in fear. We can't walk where about what people think. We can't be trying to get no reputation being big. I didn't say that to get no reputation. I didn't say that to get you to feel sorry. I don't need you feeling sorry for me. I don't need none of y'all give me nothing. Unless y'all tell you to. Right. And if y'all didn't tell you to, you don't do it. Because I ain't money hungry and you ain't the source. Right. True. And I got to trust in him. Right. And so what I'm saying is that we all going to be faced mm -hmm. with a trial and a test. To see if we believe in what we say. So it's bigger than what you got to say out your mouth. What do you do out your actions? Are you going to fold up? Are you going to cry? Is your tear going to go all the way up under? You're going to hide your growing men? And you're going to be pissing on yourself, walking in fear with your head down like an old cur because you don't like what's going on? Or are you going to stand and still walk with your head up, with your confidence in y'all? Like a pure brain. See, my boast is in y'all. And this is, this, this is no bragging. Because I know I'm going to be tried again after this. <laughs> and I still got to trust in y'all. I don't think the righteous... No, the, no, I know the righteous won't be forsaken. Hallelujah. And know his seed begging for bread. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning to take one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And trust y'all in the provision of the day. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. You who says this, when you pray, pray to this member. Our Father who art in heaven, set apart, Kodesh, hallowed be your name. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom come, Almighty Yah. Your will be done mm -hmm. on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. And Almighty Yah, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, Almighty Yah, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Mm -hmm. And Father, lead us unto temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from the evil one. Mm -hmm. For yours is the kingdom and the power. And esteem you forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah, who says, take no thought for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. See, you see, I'm learning in the scriptures that trusting in Yah's provision means that Yah is the one that takes care of you. And He's the source. I'm not telling you to quit your job. I'm not telling you to do anything. Uh, 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 because I don't know your purpose. What I am telling you is obey Yah. And that means you do what it takes to obey Yah. Mm -hmm. Because Yah ain't finna continue to hear you talking about, I gotta take off and I'm scared. And I don't know what they're gonna say. And I don't wanna do it. And I ain't got the money to obey the feast. He ain't hearing that no more. <laughs> That's a weak, fearful person who don't wanna stand up for the truth. You ain't the only one that, that whose job on the line for obeying Yah. Right. You're just one of the ones who doesn't obey Yah. My, 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 my wife's going to leave me. My husband's going to walk me. My kids ain't going to love me. My friend ain't going to talk to me. Obey y'all. Right. My mama's going to get mad at me because I ain't going to come on that way. Guess what? I ain't been in my mama's house in a few years of Christmas. And she probably listening now. And she get mad every year because we ain't going this year for Christmas. <laughs> and we ain't getting no presents on no Christmas. And we ain't going for no Thanksgiving neither. Because my mama don't matter when it comes to obeying y'all. She lose like everybody else does because we're going to trust in Josh's provision. We got to trust in Josh's provision. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just 15 and 1 says, After these things, the word of Yahuwah came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. I'm your protector, I'm your buckler, I'm your shield. 
Don't worry about your men trying to come get you. Right. You trusted me. Abraham went to go rescue his nephew Lot. He wasn't a king, but he went with kings. And when he came back, Melchizedek came to him and not the kings. Because Melchizedek knew who the covenant was with. Right. And let me explain something to you. The Most High will show them who the covenant is with. He'll bring the protection. He'll bring the provision. He'll bring what you need because he knows who his covenant will. Right. It's about the covenant that we're in. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want to be in the covenant. And you can't be in the covenant if you ain't going to be obedient. Right. Remember, go ahead and sit down until you're ready for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying you ain't got to grow. We all got to grow. For Paul even said out of the scripture, for all have sinned and have fallen short. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. But it don't mean we remain there. Right. It don't mean that we don't grow. We do. We grow from growth, from, 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 from faith to faith. From extreme to extreme. So we grow. And the most has given to every man a measure of faith. So we grow. And in our walk, we make stupid decisions, myself included. I made a few of them recently. Dumb decisions. So myself included. So, 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 guess what? We have no room to look down upon each other. Right. What we do is love one another. Long suffer one, one another. Bear each other's burdens. Be accountable to each other. And realize we're all going through something. And so we love and help one another when we need to. Say our brother or our sister going through something, reach out to him. It ain't always no money. Sometimes it's a listening ear. Sometimes all I need from you is a hug. Sometimes it's an encouraging word. Mm -hmm. Whatever you see the need to be for your brother, you do that. Because that's how we know you have passed from death unto life when you have love for the brethren. That's how we know you are a disciple of Yahuwah when you love your brother. Not when you're talking about him. Right. Not when you're putting them down, dogging them out. Yeah. Not when you're trying to belittle them. Not when you're laughing at them, got them embarrassed to ask questions. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's not love. That's hate. <laughs> we love one another. Right. Sometimes, you know, the most high will bring the one that's hard to love across your path. On purpose. To teach you where you are not at yet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Sometimes your falling down is a good thing. Yeah, exactly. To teach you that you are not where you thought you were. Right. To help you see yourself. Right. And begin to have a self-examination. Because sometimes y'all got to kill that pride on the inside of you. Tell yeah. the truth. Continue with Continue to kill that pride. So guess what? We go through certain things. That's why it's not always good to lean to our own understanding. Hallelujah. But it's good to pray about everything mm -hmm. so y'all can order our steps, direct our paths. Mm -hmm. See, so y'all provides and protects as a privilege and person's gift. Yeah. That's the Hebrew word ahav or ahava, to provide, to protect as a privilege. And a person's gift. So it's not your own self-interest for the benefits of others to become... Breathless of other people. Because somebody that you love take your breath away. See, when David and Jonathan became brothers, it wasn't no gay stuff. Mm. It wasn't no funny business. Right. It's my brother. I'm going I'm to walk with him and be with him. I'm going to make sure he's straight. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm going I'm to shoot the arrow past you. Because my daddy wanted to kill you and I don't want you to die. And I know you're the king. Yeah, my dad the king, but I know that y'all told you you was the king, so I'm riding with you. Okay. See, I'm your brother, brother, and I love you. Because that's, 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 that's brothers. That's, 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 that's brotherhood. That's the Sometimes you get mad at me, but we're still <laughs> brothers. Sometimes you're on my nerves, but we're still <laughs> brothers. Because I know the bigger picture. And I'm, I, I, I'm not your brother based on my feelings. See, I'm your brother because I'm born into this thing. See, the thing about it is, see, my kids is, is children, period. They brought the sisters, period. Why? Because they were born with the same mom and same father. I don't care how mad you got at one another. It doesn't matter what you've done to each other. You, at the end of the day, with your angry attitude, funky attitude, self, you still family. And guess what, Israel? We still family. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, period. So we should not be killing one another, going against each other, knocking out each other. We should love one another. Back door. Back doing each other. So brothers and sisters, stop calling each other a bitch. That's a crazy word that I hear these people say, bitch, bitch. You're dogging each other out, calling each other a bitch. What? Call each other a 
You go to get the bywords. You adhere to the curse when the word says you are a royal people. You are a peculiar person. You are a special treasure. You are not a bitch. You are not a hoe. Man, quit calling that girl a hoe. Husband, quit talking your wife out to that stupid stuff. I'm doing it myself. Saying things that we should not say and do. You're not that. Now, if you love one another, harsh words shouldn't continue to come out your mouth. Quit calling you a nigger. You not a nigger. You are a royal priesthood. Yeah, I'm saying the words because you know why? Well, he said that on TV. You said it when you ain't on TV. <laughs> Some of y'all be cussing and stuff in your car. At least I got a, enough boldness to say what I got to say in person. Because what you said, what you get, so I ain't got a fake to fucking pull. No, here, here I am. This is me here. Because see, we do all these things because we don't understand Yah's provision. It's by faith. We don't understand the Yah's protection. So the answer can cause you to sin against Yah and walk from Yah, then you can be covered by Yah. You got to stay under his wings in order to have the protection. Psalm 31 and 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahuwah, He is my refuge and my fortress, my El, and Him will I trust. He that dwell well in the secret place upon His wings, right. in the hidden parts of Yah. You will abide, you will live. There will be a home under the shadow of El Shaddai. That's what that says. I would say of Yahuwah, he is my refuge. My fortress. My mighty one. In him will I trust. Go ahead. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. He shall deliver thee from the snare, the trap. The thing that can break your ankle. That can cause your walk. To become stagnant. Mm. They can make you limp. They can kill you and cause you to be killed by somebody. Mm. He'll take you out of that. And from the noise and pestilence. From the noise from the loud noise and uh, 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 desolation. Mm. The thing that's so loud in your life because you keep seeing it. You keep experiencing it. It's noise to you. <laughs> it's killing your life. He will deliver you from it. Go ahead. He shall mm. cover thee with his feathers. Mm. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Push balls. You know, all chickens don't run. Mm. <laughs> if a chicken got her, she's on her, and you come over there, oh, she's going to fight to the death at you. She's she, she, she flapping, trying to hit you. She'll give her life to them chickens. In a true mother or father would. So I know why I said the feathers. He'll cover you with the feathers, Jack. Yeah, he'll cover you. He will shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings. Shall you trust? You're going to trust under his wings. You're going you're gonna to be hidden, protected, and covered. So Y'all's word ain't no lie. Man, I feel, this is, let me tell you something. This ain't no church. Y'all's word don't lie. This stuff is not no poetry for you to sound good and everybody to clap because you got good oratorical skills. <laughs> no, this is real life. This is true. This ain't something we just do, that's what we try to do. What? No. Then that's why you losing then. Because you playing. Right. Mm. This is real. This is real. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. Mm. His truth, his word, shall be thy shield and buckler. What's, his, what's your shield and buckler? His truth. His truth. Messiah says the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, will lead you and guide you into all truth. Into his shield and buckler. Mm. Mm. The Ruach going to bring you into the truth so that y'all can cover you and provide for you. Right. That's amazing, huh? Mm. We never understood that before. Right. Go ahead. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Say nor, what? You shall not be afraid for the terror by night. Push pause. You shall not be a coward for the terror by night. That's what that mean. 
You shall not, you shall not be a coward for the terror by night. Go ahead. Nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. The word terror is the Hebrew word uh, uh, yare. It means you should not be frightened. You ain't got to have reverence for, for danger. No. In the patio, we got a yod and a resh. It says the picture graph is a, of a hand and the head of a man. The head of a man is used for the throwing, a flowing of water and a river, a throwing of the finger to show a direction to walk or live. Mm -hmm. The throwing of an arrow, the throwing down of water and rain, all of fear where one throws self to the foot of one in authority to the man. Let me tell you something, to the head of a man. Let me tell you something. We ain't got to be afraid of nothing. They don't lead our life. They don't lead our life. Mm -hmm. You know why we compromise? Because we're afraid. Mm -hmm. You should be rather afraid to lose y'all. Then men, Amen. then your job, they come then you. friends, mm -hmm. no, then things. You shall, you should trust in Yah. You shall not be afraid for the terror. You shall not be afraid for the terror. Mm. The Picard, the dread. You shouldn't be afraid of the sudden alarm, being alarmed. No, they fly by night, nor the arrow. They fly by day, by day I finished out. Nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness. Or, or, or fail, where you can't see. You don't be afraid because you can't see nothing. Or where it's coming from. Because you walk by faith. faith and not by sight. sight. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. But you trust in Yahuwah. You believe in him. You depend upon him. You, you should know that he is your strength. He is your refuge. He is your buckler. He is your shield. He is your all in all. And you should have confidence in that. If you don't have confidence in that, then I must have to Ask a question. Do you believe in what you're talking about? Mm. Do you believe in what you teach? Or are you just talking? There's a whole lot of folks just talking that don't believe in what they teach. They just be talking. Conversation piece. A conversation piece. Some of our spiritual players. <laughs> Spiritual pimps trying to talk slick, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you can't fool y'all. He know your heart ain't got no strength in it. He know that you scared. Your problem is you you, you don't want to admit it. Admit it. When that man uh, in Mark ninth chapter, he was like, you know, uh, your your disciples. They couldn't catch the devil out. He, the man wanted to try to blame the disciples. <laughs> it was that man's faith that, that his daughter was not delivered. Messiah made him see that and confess that. He said, well, if, you, if, you, if, if, if you can do it, you know, uh, to do it. He said, I can do it. What, what, what you mean I can do it? All things are possible to him that believe, to him that have faith. The man said, you know, I believe, but help my unbelief. Help my lack of faith. Help me in the areas that I don't have faith. See, I believe I got faith because it's all good. But what I'm going through, now I struggle. Help me in that area that when I start going through, that I won't lack faith. See, his honesty is what got the deliverance. Right. His humility. Him and men, he did not have the faith of his son being delivered. And the most high, Yahushua, Yahushua delivered that man's son. And that's something. Yeah. Go ahead, read. 
Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than food and the body than raiment? Mm -hmm. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, or Shalomai, in all his esteem, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Elohim so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Mm. Oh, you of what? Little faith. Because they concerned about what they're going to wear and what they're going to eat. He said, now look at you now. Ain't life more important than, than, than food? Right. Ain't your body more important than clothes? Uh, Man, look at the birds in the air. What? They don't fall on me. They don't do nothing but just go eat. Right. <laughs> Look at the lizard of the field. And you are much more important than them. They say, oh, you of little faith. You don't trust in the provision of Yah because you got little faith. You've been bound so long by your oppressor that you believe your oppressor more than you believe Yah. But I'm telling you, you can now start believing Yah more than the oppressor. You can start believing y'all more than the oppressor. Stop believing what you see. Stop believing what they're telling you and believe y'all. Go ahead. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the nations seek. For Abba, Father, knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought for, itself, for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So he says, now look here. The morrow what you're going to wear or drink or have on the Gentiles, the other nations, the ones who don't have Yahuwah at the mighty one, that's what they seek. Yeah. They seek after those things. Clothing and raiment. And, but you need to seek first the kingdom. Well, how do you do that? By prayer, by fasting, by, 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 by worship, by praise, by getting the God's word, by seeking him, learning him, wanting to know him. He will provide for you. This may be a struggle. But I'm telling you the truth. He will provide. Take your time. Pray to him about all things. Be still. Be patient. He will provide. He will. He provide for you. We just have to believe that. Yah is our strength. He's our light. He's our salvation. I got it because I'm not going to. He will supply all of our needs. We look at Philippians uh, uh, 4. 11 through 16, and it talks about Paul, talks about him being afflicted, him, him being in want or in need, and then him, you know, having enough. So he knows how to deal with both sides, how to be hungry and to suffer need. And he realized, like, going through life and his experience with Yah, that he can endure like, when, he, when he got a lot or when he don't have a lot, he can still do all things through Hamashiach, who strengthens him. We got to have that same mind that the Most High will provide for us. He will supply all of our needs. We got to be still, of course, and we got to be able to see him as that banner of victory. We got two of them. You know, Moses, they were never able to call Yah, Yahuwah Nisi, until after the battle. And during that battle, Moses had to hold his arms up, symbolizing prayer. His arms got heavy. Then guess what? Somebody came and grabbed his arms to help pray with him. 
Pray with one another. Let me bear your burden. Let me endure your struggle your, your, your with you. I'm going to hold my armor with your arm, and we're going to pray together. Because if you get weary in praying, your arms start falling, you start losing, I see you losing, let me help hold that arm up. Mm -hmm. And we will win together. Because only as, as long as Moses had his arms up, they were able to beat the enemy. They were able to fight Amalek. And guess what? They were all able to call Yahuwah, Yahuwah Nisi, their banner of victory, their miracle worker, the one who protects them and defends them. The most high is your banner. It takes you having faith. It takes you praying. It takes, it takes you praying with each other to get that victory. Not us giving in, getting weary, getting ready to stop, wanting to quit. No, seeking the kingdom of Yah first with all of his righteousness, praying to him, arms up heavy, still praying. Mm. Not getting weary and doing well. Right. See, we're going to if we don't faint. I wonder where Paul got that from. Hmm. The Torah. So they call him Yahuwah Nisi. Let's, I'm going to read this. Listen to this. Exodus 17, 12 through 16 says, But Moshe's hands were heavy. It said, and they took a stone. That means when they saw his hands getting heavy, or he told his hands getting heavy, they came and got a stone. And they put it under him. And said, let me give you some comfort, brother. Sit down right here. And he sat there upon, and Aharon and Earth stayed up his hands. He had, he had his right hand man beside him. And he had Ur, and they kept his hands up. Yeah. They stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Yahushua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Write this for a memorial in the Sephir, and rehearse it in the ears of Yahushua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance. The most high to destroy Israel's enemy because of them holding their hands up. Yeah, that was wrong. They tried to take it from behind while they was vulnerable. Y'all sees that, and y'all will destroy your enemy. Keep your hands up. Keep going forward. Keep praying. Mm. Keep seeking y'all. He said, I'm making a, a memorial. I will utterly destroy, put out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moses built an altar, a special sacrifice, and he called the name of that altar Yahuwah Nisi. For he said, because Yahuwah has sworn that Yahuwah will have war with Amalek from generation, from generation to generation, he swore he'll protect, defend, be our banner of victory. They will no longer attack us from the back. As a matter of fact, y'all going to attack them from now on. Y'all will defeat your enemies. Now he goes to a deal with him. You didn't see David going to Nabal. The most high said, the word said, his wife talked to him. Abigail spoke to him, told him what she did. He became still like a dead man and said, Yahuwah smote him and he died. Mm -hmm. You better pay attention. You didn't see David going, David going to Saul. Yahuwah had that done. See, the most high would protect you and defeat, defeat your enemies for you. For you. He'll defend you. It's done by faith. It's done by even you get tired. My arm's heavy. I feel like I'm tired. Hold him up anyway. I'm tired. If you can't do it yourself, brother, my arm's heavy. I'm praying. Pray with me. Hold him up with your brother. Help him have some comfort so that you can have Yahuwah as your banner of victory as well. Yahuwah Nisi. Most of us, we quit, we quit, we quit praying. One thing I've seen us do as a pattern is that when it comes to, to struggles struggle and trials, we stop praying. We stop seeking y'all. We want to say, woe is me. We want to get weary and well doing. We want to quit. He ain't with me. No, that's your flesh. You in the flesh. And I'm telling you, I, I love. People say, oh, I can't hear y'all. What? They say, I don't hear. Are you praying? Get in your word and read then. I don't know if he's with me. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right. I'm confused. He is not the author of confusion. When you start going through trials, you don't have to live in sin. You ain't got to result back to the sin. No, you persevere. You push. You don't get weary in doing well. For you trust in Yah's provision. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm done. Hallelujah. Almighty Yah, we thank you for your compassion. 
We thank you, Almighty Yah, for your love and kindness and your strength and your truth, Almighty. We ask you, Almighty Yah, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, to, 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 first and foremost, please forgive us for our lack of faith, for our lack of trusting in you and trusting in your provision. Help us to grow and not continue to lean to our own understanding, Almighty Yah, but to grow and trust in you and believe that you can help us and believe that you are with us. Help us not to worry or be anxious, but really depend upon you. Help us to get into your word daily, every, every day. Read your word, to eat off your word, to pray to you, to fast, to just to seek your kingdom so we can have a better relationship with you, Almighty God. So we can know what your provision is, so we can know what your, so we can experience your living. I pray, Almighty God, that you would give us the spirit of discernment. Help us to be able to discern the difference between you and the adversary. Mm. We pray for the spirit of wisdom, Almighty God, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. We pray for the spirit of understanding and the spirit of, and the spirit of knowledge of you. That you would help us to do the things that we're supposed to do to please you, to have this trust in you. Teach us your ways, O oh Yah. Show us your truth. Help us to live by your word. For we know that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Help us, Almighty Yah, to be able to trust in your provision. We thank you, Almighty Yah, and we just magnify you. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name, hallelujah, praise Yah. So praise Yah. Um, Hallelujah. I had my, I had my um, announcer, announcer to come and um, uh, give us some announce announcements. Also, um, if you all would like to give, then we can, um, if, you, if you all would like to give, I think we, we, we have the, um, the cash app in the, um, the, um, the comment section. In the comment section. And also, when it will be uploaded to YouTube later, it will also be in the description of the YouTube video and also on the podcast. Right. So if you are led to give, just look in those descriptions and go from there. Right. Look at those. Also, if you need prayer, uh, inbox us. We'll, we'll be glad to pray uh, with you all. And um, just, just praise y'all. I pray that everyone is blessed and that everyone uh, is able to stand firm on the word of y'all and be able to trust in y'all's provision. Praise y'all for his goodness and praise y'all for his loving kindness. Shabbat shalom.